no coverage in English. Buenas noches desde el helicóptero. Yo soy Eliana Moreno reportando sobre una persecución policial que ahora se encuentra en la autopista 105 en dirección oeste en el área de Hawthorne. La patrulla de caminos de California está persiguiendo a este vehículo porque creen que el conductor posiblemente está manejando bajo la influenza, I think that's how you say it, de uh, alcohol o drogas, perdón. Uh, esta es una persecución que inicialmente empezó en la ciudad de Bell y ahí fue donde los uh, oficiales de esa ciudad trataron de parar a este conductor uh, y uh, fue cuando la persecución empezó manejando en las autopistas uh, 105, 405 y 110 antes de llegar una vez más aquí a la autopista 5 en dirección oeste donde la patrulla de Caminos de California ahora está persiguiendo al conductor, no solamente desde la tierra, pero también desde el aire, usando el helicóptero del Departamento del Alguacil del Condado del Sheriff. Ahora vamos en rumbo hacia el aeropuerto de Los Ángeles, LAX, mejor conocido, y la policía del aeropuerto ha sido avisada que esta persecución va en su dirección en caso de que el conductor trate de escaparse en el aeropuerto. Al momento uh, se cree que solamente hay una persona detrás del volante y adentro del vehículo carro, uh, un hombre adulto uh, vestido de blanco. Y el carro es un uh, carro blanco también, un Toyota Camry. El portando es el helicóptero, Eliana Moreno, del Mundo 52. Back with you guys here in English. I was just saying that the LAX police have been advised about this pursuit coming their way just in case this guy decides to ditch the vehicle over here. Uh, so, yeah, my pilot George is saying that the sheriff's helicopter is now leaving. Uh, the CHP helicopter is coming in. We're exiting at Imperial, it looks like. So, 105 West at Imperial. And going to be U turning? Yep, making a U turn here. So, U turn on Imperial. Look at all these officers, gosh. Yeah, could they have done a pit? Maybe. He was going a little too fast for that. Uh, so he's uh, back on the 105 this time, going to be going eastbound 105 from LAX. So going to be heading back to... ...from 405, but he may just decide to stay on the uh, 105 freeway instead. So still eastbound here on the 105, coming up to the 405. Continuando aquí en la autopista 5, eh, perdón, la autopista 105 en dirección este, acercándose a la autopista 405. Un conductor uh, posiblemente manejando bajo los efectos de drogas o alcohol, una persecución que empezó en la ciudad de Bell. Again, this is a pursuit that started in Bell. Officers believe that this guy may possibly be under the influence, but for, again, for someone that could have possibly been under the influence, this person is driving relatively well. He's in and out of traffic, but really has been able to avoid uh, all sorts of collisions that could have possibly happened, and he's been extremely high speeds, like what we're seeing now at some points even going uh, past 100 miles an hour. The fastest we saw was about 117. That's the sheriff's helicopter there, or rather the uh, CHP helicopter overhead. It was the sheriff's helicopter earlier, 
but now it is CHP that is uh, overhead because th it's their ground units that are behind this guy. Initially, it was Bell Police. Bell Police does not have their own helicopters, so they were getting assistance from the LA County Sheriff's Department. Now it's uh, CHP exclusively. So Bell backed off, and now it's CHP ground units as well as the helicopter overhead. Look at, thank you, yes. Look at this shot, guys. You will only see this here. <laughs> Continuing here, eastbound 105 at Vermont. So we're entering Englewood. This driver seems to favor the 105. It's the pr freeway that we've been on the most. We were on the 405 for a little bit. We were on the 110 as well, but uh, then he just hopped on the 105 West, made his way all the way to LAX, and then you turned and he's going back eastbound 105. Again, this started in uh, the city of Bell, uh, which is, uh, Bell is located north of the 105 and uh, essentially right off the 710 freeway. So typically pursuits tend to return to an area that is familiar to the driver. It's typically where the pursuit began. So I wouldn't be surprised if this driver is trying to make his way back over to the city of Bell. If that's the intent, he's going the right way. So uh, he would stay on the 105 and exit once he gets a little closer to the 710 or possibly even transition onto that 710, try to work his way that way. But it's not always the case. He may be trying to go somewhere else, but for now he is headed in the direction where this all began. Transition now. Uh, from the 105 to the 110, 110 north it looks like. Okay. And if we could keep on the uh, right side of the freeway, George. Perfect, thank you, because of the uh, uh, overpass lanes, the, uh, the fast track lanes. Oh, new information here. they're saying two so two uh, men in the vehicle go ahead it's marlton you got it we were just on a turn hey back with you guys here northbound 110 freeway from the 105 my pilot george doing a great job here getting us a uh, the best shot here in this pursuit. These are always difficult when they come through the LAX area because there's all sorts of airspace restrictions. So right now we're uh, northbound on the 110. The fast track lanes do come up here soon, which is actually why I was asking George if we could keep on this side of the freeway. Um, because if we're on the other side, sometimes those overpass lanes, the, uh, the es express lanes actually can block our view. So we're on, on the right side for this again. Uh, Northbound on the 110, coming through South Los Angeles, which is north of the 105 freeway. Una vez más, reportando desde el helicóptero de Soeliana Moreno, sobre una persecución policial que ahora se encuentra en el área del sur de Los Ángeles. Esta es la autopista 110 en dirección norte, justo al norte de la autopista 105, donde la patrulla de caminos de California está persiguiendo a un conductor uh, que se cree posiblemente está manejando bajo los efectos de drogas o alcohol. Es una persecución que empezó a ser hace unos 20 minutos en la ciudad de Bell. Y ahí fue donde esos oficiales trataron de parar al conductor, pero se echó a la fuga y la persecución continuó en las autopistas 101, 405 y 110. Ahora nos encontramos una vez más en la autopista 110 en dirección norte, acercándonos hacia la salida de la calle Manchester, donde ahora se conoce que hay dos personas a bordo de este carro, dos hombres adultos. Y como pueden ver, el vehículo es un carro blanco, uh, posiblemente un Toyota Camry, con uh, la patrulla de caminos de California, persiguiendo a este conductor desde la tierra. Con, uh, hay que contar, veo a uh, tres patrullas del camino de, ca de la, la, la policía de California y uh, también el helicóptero, uh, como pueden ver ahí, el helicóptero de la patrulla de caminos de California.
Okay, back with you guys here. 110 North at Vernon. Okay, so the city of Bell, they're the original uh, agency on this. They're no longer in the chase. They backed off when CHP took over. But uh, our assignment desk, Esmeralda Cisneros, uh, she actually called uh, the Bell Police Department and they told her that they are in pursuit of this driver because they believe that he is under the influence of drugs or alcohol. So DUI. And uh, continuing, uh, passing the uh, new BMO Stadium. I'll widen out so you can see what that looks like. Uh, so we're passing uh, the BMO Stadium. We're going to be passing uh, the Coliseum, USC. And continuing northbound on the 110 freeway. Con dep depending how far north we go, we may pass by uh, Crypto.com and all of the uh, buildings there in downtown Los Angeles. Go ahead. Yeah, so it's CHP only now. Uh, Bell Police backed off, and even the Sheriff's helicopter backed off as well. Uh, they have a CHP helicopter over right now. So it's uh, all CHP. Okay. So passing by USC. One ten at the ten. He's setting up to go ten. But let's see if he does ten east or ten west. If he stays in the left lane, it's west. If he stays in the right, it's east. And he's going east. Uh, so eastbound on the ten, unless he makes a dramatic change here at the very last second. Nope, he's not. Uh, so going to be eastbound on the ten freeway, coming away from the one ten freeway. So we are just uh, south of downtown Los Angeles. Uh, we're going to pass by that stretch of the ten freeway that was shut down for a week due to a major fire. So uh, for those of you who are watching us from outside of our viewing area, I'm sure you heard about our big uh, freeway closure that we had out here about a week ago. So uh, this is that stretch of freeway. As you can see, it's all reopened. Uh, they were able to reopen it within a week's time. At this point, uh, the flow of traffic looks uh, to be just about what you see right here. So it's a little bit slow at, uh, in pockets, but uh, he's going to be able to uh, get through uh, pretty well without any major delays. So eastbound on the 10 freeway. This is going to lead him right to the East LA interchange, which is the busiest interchange of the world. That's where the 5, the 10, the 60, and the 101 all come together. He'll come up uh, to that in just a few miles. Again, uh, CHP in pursuit. Buenas noches una vez más desde el helicóptero. Estamos reportando sobre una persecución policial que ahora se encuentra en el área del sur de Los Ángeles, justo al sur del uh, centro de Los Ángeles, donde la patrulla de caminos de California está persiguiendo a un conductor. Esta es una persecución que empezó en la ciudad de Bell y ahora se encuentra en la autopista 10 en dirección este. Uh, este es el trayectorio que estuvo cerrado hace una semana a causa de un incendio, pero como pueden ver ahora todo está reabierto y el uh, tránsito en, en el área no, no está tan lento. Como pueden ver, el conductor está manejando a más de 80 millas por hora. Uh, la patrulla de caminos de California ahora está diciendo sobre sus radios que hay uh, dos hombres adentro del vehículo. Inicialmente habían dicho que solo era uno, uh, obviamente el conductor, pero ahora estamos escuchando que sí tiene un pasajero que también es un hombre. Y si el conductor continúa manejando en esta di dirección, va a llegar el intercambio del este de Los Ángeles, que es el intercambio uh, más uh, ocupado, en verdad, uh, de, de todo el mundo, donde las autopistas 10, 5, 60 y 101 se juntan aquí en uh, el área de Boyle Heights. Uh, pero al momento vamos a ver en qué carril termina. Creo que si continúa en este carril va a terminar en la autopista 60, y sería 60 hacia el este, porque aquí es donde empieza. Pero vamos a ver ahorita que complete uh, la vuelta aquí para ver en qué autopista termina. Pero por ahora aquí en Boyle Heights, si es que toma la autopista 5 en dirección sur, ahí sí hay bastante tráfico. 
Ah, pero por ahorita creo que va a tomar la autopista 60, pero vamos a ver aquí en unos instantes a ver cuál decide. Pero uh, les repito, es una persecución. Aquero se encuentra aquí en el área de Boyle Heights con la patrulla de, de caminos de California persiguiendo al conductor. Back with you guys here. Uh, so what I was just saying in Spanish is that the drivers come up to the East LA interchange, so that gives him a lot of choices. He's out my side, uh, so he's out my side nine o'clock. So he's kind of behind us. I believe he's getting on the. Uh, so he's uh, northbound on uh, the uh, northbound on the five. Yeah, so northbound on the five, uh, over by Hollenbeck Park. He just passed by Hollenbeck Park. Way here. He's uh, northbound now on the five, so he's just passing by Hollenbeck Park. He's going to essentially still be in the Boyle Heights area. Going to be passing by uh, landmarks like County USC Medical Hospital and the coroner's office here for LA County. If he stays in this lane, I think it drops him off on the 10. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the 10. Yeah, so that's going to put him 10 east. 10 east from the five. So that's going to put him right by the hospital. So right uh, by County USC Medical Hospital. He's going to be just on the south side of the hospital. And again, if he has any intention of getting uh, back to the city of Bell, he's going the right way because uh, he could take the 10 and then drop down the uh, 710 south. So I, I just heard on the scanner, they're confirming what we heard, which was a possible DUI driver that started in Bell, and it's now uh, up in uh, still the, the Boyle Heights area, but we're going to be in uh, City Terrace here in just a moment. And there you go, there's the sign, City Terrace. And then after this, we're going to enter East LA. So if I was a guessing person, and let's say I am, <laughs> I'm going to say he's, uh, he's going to get on the southbound 710 to get back towards Bell. But we'll see. He seems to, he seems pretty confident uh, on uh, really any freeway he's been on. He uh, seemed to favor the 105 for quite a while, and now he's on the 10 freeway for quite a while. So eastbound here on the 10, coming up to Soto. And thank you to everyone who is messaging us on Twitter. We are getting your messages. Uh, our friend uh, Jeff from Illinois, thank you for always uh, tuning in. Uh, even though I, I know it's late over there, so, but we, we appreciate your viewership. And of course, uh, you'll be able to catch uh, hopefully the termination of this pursuit on the NBC4 News at 11 o'clock. We do have that coming up here in the next 30 minutes. So our crews are preparing for that, but we still got 30 minutes left. So we'll see if the pursuit ends before then. It's been going for about 30 minutes at this point. So you start to think about things like, well, how much gas did this person start off with? He's been driving for at least 30. He's been driving this car very hard. Uh, Toyotas, though, they're, you know, they're obviously great cars, so uh, we'll, see, uh, we'll see how long uh, this car is going to be able to take all that pressure that he's putting on it by going 100 miles plus. He's slowed down a little bit just because of traffic right now, but again, eastbound on the 105 coming up to the 710. For those of you who uh, like to listen on the scanners along with us, I know we, there's a few of you, uh, the blue. Uh, so CHP blue is what's broadcasting this. He's entering Alhambra, so that means he passed the 710. So good thing I didn't bet any money on, on uh, saying that he was going to get on the 710 uh, because he's uh, already east of that. He's eastbound on the uh, 10 at about Atlantic. Still CHP in pursuit. Now, in terms of pursuit intervention tactics, all CHP officers are pit approved, so they could do a pit maneuver, and the vehicle is small enough for it. But the problem is the speed. He's just going way too fast. So they really wouldn't be able to, to pit him at this, at this speed. It's just impossible. I mean, they could possibly hurt this person or anybody else so that the vehicle may hit. So at this point, that's pretty much out of the question. The speeds are just too high. And then, could they do a spike strip? That they can, but 
they would kind of have to figure out what lane he's going to be in in order to successfully deploy a spike strip. And at this point, he's kind of been all over the place. So it's really hard to guess uh, what lane he would be in. But So for now, uh, all they can do is just continue to follow. Uh, eastbound here on the 10 freeway in the Alhambra area. So still eastbound on the 10, we're entering Rosemead. And if you're just joining us, this is a pursuit that we've been on now for like the last 30 minutes or so. And this was originally the city of Bell Police that tried to pull over this driver because they thought that he was under the influence of something. And that's when the driver took off and the pursuit was on. He's been driving relatively well, though, for someone that could possibly be under the influence because he's been high speeds pretty much the whole time in and out of traffic and really hasn't had too much in the way of close calls. Uh, it is a Toyota Camry. Thank you, George. So, yeah, he just uh, got that confirmation there. Uh, Toyota Camry white in color chp in pursuit it was originally bell police as, as i said but because this guy has been on the freeway for so long the california highway patrol took over the chase so now we are uh, still eastbound here on the 10 freeway entering el monte so they're at about your side at nine o'clock Yeah, if we could get a little closer to the freeway, that'd be ideal. Thank you. So once again, thank you to everyone who's been joining us on OBCLA.com and all of our streaming platforms. <laughs> this chase is fast. Uh, we're looking at 100 miles plus at times. Fastest I think I noticed was 117. The car is a white Toyota Camry. It's got a little bit of uh, body damage on the driver's side here. The, the bumper is black in color. It's got a spoiler. It's got a black roof. And uh, it's got two occupants inside, apparently, uh, two uh, adult males. And when this pursuit does come to an end, everyone in the vehicle will be detained uh, just the same. Even though, of, of course, the, the passenger may not be a willing participant in all of this. But again, uh, CHP officers will have to detain everyone just the same. And then after that, they'll be able to take everyone back to the station and, and figure out who's responsible for this and who's not and release uh, whoever isn't. So when this does come to an end though we will see everyone detained and again at this point we're hearing that there are two adult males in the vehicle and th once again thank you to everyone who is joining us on nbcla.com all of our streaming platforms we do have the nbc4 news at 11 o'clock coming up here in the next 20 minutes so if you're in the la area get your tvs ready on channel four of course we'll also be on telemundo 52 and Thank you to everyone who is sending me messages on Twitter and all of our viewers. A special thanks to our friend Ian Barrientos, who's watching us as well. Thank you for your viewership, Ian. As we continue to follow this chase, eastbound on the 10 freeway, coming up to the 605. Una vez más es el helicóptero, yo soy Liliana Moreno reportándose una persecución policial que ahora se encuentra en el área de Baldwin Park. 
Estamos en la autopista 10 yendo hacia el este. Acabamos de cruzar la autopista 605. Y la patrulla de caminos de California está persiguiendo a este conductor de un vehículo blanco en color, un Toyota Camry, porque creen que el conductor posiblemente está manejando bajo los efectos de drogas o alcohol. Es una persecución que empezó en la ciudad de Bell. Y ahí fue donde sus oficiales trataron de parar al conductor, pero él se echó a la fuga y la persecución empezó. Uh, montándose a la autopista 105, 405, 110, y, uh, después la autopista 5 en el este de Los Ángeles y ahora en la autopista 10 yendo hacia el este. Vamos uh, en rumbo hacia Huascovina en el momento y usualmente lo que vemos en persecuciones es que los conductores tratan de regresar a un área que, uh, que conocen bien. En este caso pensamos que posiblemente eso sería la ciudad de Bell porque ahí empezó la persecución, pero ahora estamos uh, hacia la este y hacia el norte de esa ciudad. Entonces, al momento se desconoce a dónde uh, este conductor uh, tiene la intención uh, de ir, pero como pueden ver, está yendo a alta velocidad, a más de 100 millas por hora, a veces uh, 117, lo más que hemos visto durante esta persecución. Y los oficiales de la Autoridad de Caminos de California nos eh, están diciendo que creen que hay dos personas a bordo del vehículo, dos uh, hombres de uh, edad desconocida, pero la persecución continúa, como pueden ver, aquí autopista 5, perdón, autopista 10, en dirección este, acercándonos a la salida de la avenida Benson. Oh, okay, so it's going to be units only. So continuing eastbound on the 10, coming up on Azusa Avenue. Once again, thank you to everyone who is joining us uh, online and all of our social media platforms as well. I, I just got a, a message here from our friend Joe, who's watching us all the way from Australia. So uh, thank you to all our international viewers as well. We do get a lot of Spanish-speaking viewers internationally, so that's really cool because, of course, we, we are the only helicopter here in the L.A. area that uh, reports in dual languages, so we do get a lot of love uh, from our Spanish-speaking countries, but we just got a little shout-out there from our friend Joe in Australia, so thank you for that, Joe. And uh, continuing westbound here in West Covina, 10 East, coming up to Baranca Street. If you're just joining us, uh, officers think this guy is under the influence of drugs or alcohol, but... I mean, looking at the way he's driving, he's driving great, all things considered. Uh, really not too much in the way of close calls. He's been in and out of traffic, uh, just fine, high speeds, 100 miles plus the whole time, really. But uh, it's unclear how this is going to end, of course. That's not why we follow these things. Hopefully it, it doesn't end in a violent crash of some sort. But the good thing is he's on, on the freeway. So uh, the good thing is that uh, we don't have pedestrians, we don't have red lights, we don't have stop signs. A lot of the things that could normally lead to an immediate crash. Uh, we just don't have that right now. We just have a guy on an open freeway for the most part, traveling at extremely high speeds here, 100 miles plus in West Covina. So we are now 10 east at Via Verde. So we can talk about pursuit intervention tactics. And usually it would be a pit maneuver. Okay, well, all CHP officers can do a pit. They, they learn it in the academy. However, the elements just aren't right for it. He's going just way too fast. We need him to be going about 35 miles an hour or less. And the road needs to be pretty much wide open for him not to hit anything if he, if he spins out. So in this case, that's not going to be uh, one of the options. Uh, could they try a spike strip? That they can. Uh, but the only thing is they pretty much have to guess which lane he's going to be in in order to deploy that spike strip. And even when they do, it doesn't automatically disable the vehicle. It will just puncture the tires and slowly start to deflate those. So we could still see a pretty lengthy pursuit even after that. 
but sometimes spike strips work pretty much uh, immediately, and it does bring things to an end as soon as the driver realizes that they have a flat. So we'll see how this ends. Hopefully, again, hopefully it ends well. And uh, hopefully this guy just runs out of gas. I mean, we've been on this now for almost an hour, and he's been re really heavy on the pedal. Uh, go ahead, Esmeralda. That. Yes, looks like he's exiting here, transitioning. 71, yeah. Actually, it's, uh, yeah, 57, yeah. So it's going to be uh, 57 from the 10. So southbound on the 57. So maybe... Uh, this guy's going to take us into Orange County. We'll see. But currently, we're in Pomona, right at the 10 and the 57. 57 at Temple. Still uh, southbound here on the 57 freeway. The Orange Freeway is what it's called. 57 starts at the Orange Crush down in the city of Orange and uh, ends at the 210. Right now he's going southbound though on the 57. So this is going to put him into... Uh, Basically, Pomona, Diamond Bar area, eventually Brea. And I just got a little update uh, from our assignment desk, you guys. So we're actually, once 11 o'clock rolls around, we're actually going to do a, a quick report for Telemundo to start off the 11 o'clock show, and then we're going to move over to NBC. So if you're bilingual and want to uh, watch us on both stations, uh, that's the plan. Uh, if not, then you, of course you can continue to watch us here on our stream, and uh, we will eventually be on uh, on the live news show just a little after 11. So I'm entering Diamond Bar here. So he's going to be coming up on the 60 here very soon. And he could go east or west on the 60 if he chooses to, but currently set up to stay on the southbound 57, I think. Let's see. If you ever drive over here at the, in this area of the 57 and the 60, it is literally the most confusing interchange that I believe we have in our area uh, because it... It's just very confusing to figure out which lane to be in to get on uh, the right freeway. So he might be a little confused. He's in the carpool lane right now. Yep, westbound 60. So there we go. Got an answer to our question. Westbound 60 from the 57. So once again, for those of you just joining us, this is a driver that officers in the city of Bell, what looks like a, you know, many moons ago, <laughs> but it's, it's been about an hour, uh, officers in the city of Bell thought that this driver was possibly under the influence. They tried to pull him over, but the guy took off. 
we're hearing that there are two people in the car, two adult males, and since Bell was behind it, uh, and they got on the freeway, they handed it over to the California Highway Patrol. So the California Highway Patrol uh, are the units behind the vehicle, and it's also the helicopter overhead is also CHP. We're now going westbound on the 60s. So if you've been watching us from the beginning, we've taken you on an aerial tour of the Los Angeles area because we have been all over the place. We were on the 105, we were on the 405, we were on the 110, the 5, the 10, the 60. So we're, uh, oh, and I forgot the 57, but we're uh, back westbound here on the 60 freeway coming into the Rolling Heights area. So we're near Nogale Street. And once again, we're getting ready to start our 11 o'clock newscasts on both uh, Telemundo 52 and NBC4. So we're getting ready for that here in the next few minutes. But of course, we'll continue to stream here online while we prepare for that. And I'll quickly just give a few shout outs because we, of course, appreciate your viewership, appreciate your love. Uh, DGG, thank you for uh, tuning in. And our friends in Orange County, uh, Mike Fisher, OC Scanner, and Matt Flower. Thank you guys for all you always do to give us tips and, uh, and the like. And uh, thank you for watching. So coming up to Fullerton Road, there's CHP. They're the units that are behind this. Uh, that officer could join the mix if uh, he's authorized to, or he could help with traffic breaks and things of that nature. And once again, if you're a scanner hound uh, and want to listen along with us, uh, it's not working on the blue frequency, so CHP blue. And we're still westbound 60, coming up to Azusa Avenue. I know it says eastbound 60 on the map, but it's just because we're not right over the freeway, so uh, that's why it says that. But we're actually going westbound on the 60. Next freeway coming up is going to be the 605. Yes. And uh, not from this distance. OK. Oh, yeah. Yeah, good point. Yeah. I got it. Hey, okay, he's in the HOV lane there, in and out of traffic. Uh, he does. Hmm. I don't see. Could you reset the uh, NBC IFB for me? Could you reset the NBC IFB for me? I might need it on another hilltop. It's just really scratchy. Uh, we're currently in uh, like Hacienda Heights. Oh yeah, Telemundo's fine. I could hear them practicing and it sounds clear. It's NBC that I'm worried about. I can't hear it. Oh yeah, Telemundo's fine. I could hear them practicing and it sounds clear. It's NBC that I'm worried about. I can't hear it.
Yes, that sounds like it's going to be better. Thank you. Let's see. I was hearing them a moment ago. Okay, copy that. Alrighty, back with you guys here. I had to take care of a quick little uh, housekeeping issue because uh, we are getting ready to start our shows. And I say shows because we're doing Telemundo and NBC at the top of 11. Pursuit continues here westbound on the 60. We're very close to the Rose Hill Cemetery. In fact, we're flying right over it. And it looks like he's going to transition onto the 605. So setting up to go 605 north. But let's see if he completes it. Yeah. But actually, it looks like you might be 605 north. Yeah. So made a last uh, second change there. 605 north. Or 605 south, rather. 605 south. 605 south coming under the 60 freeway. Copy that. Telemundo in cinco minutos. Sí, en cinco. Uh, no sé dónde estaremos, pero posiblemente en Santa Fe Springs. Thank you. So I'm just looking up ahead here on the 605. The traffic looks pretty much like what we're seeing here. It won't be incredibly heavy. The speeds are fast then. Yes, that's correct. 605 South uh, near Beverly Boulevard. By the time we start the shows, I think we're going to be in Santa Fe Springs. I think we'll be closer to the five, unless he exits. Uh, no, we're 605 South still, uh, 605 South. Sometimes the map, um, if I'm out right over the freeway, kind of gets a little confused, uh, but it is uh, 605 South. Once again, thank you to everyone who is joining us online. I'm just uh, trying to catch my breath a little bit here because we are going to be starting our newscast at 11 o'clock. If you're in the LA area, uh, we're Channel 4 on uh, NBC. We're uh, Channel 52 on Telemundo. Uh, but of course, we'll, we'll continue to stream here online. You can find us on NBCLA.com. You can also find us on Telemundo 52. Once again, from News Chopper 4, I'm Eliana Moreno. And this pursuit continues on the southbound 605, coming up to Washington Boulevard in Pico Rivera.
He's setting up to the transition, maybe. Or com committed south 605. Okay. Copy. Yeah. vehicle again high speed pursuit of a possible DUI driver so this could be considered a dangerous pursuit CHP is behind they are following right now uh, so far nothing besides the high speed that we're worried about it has been a relatively calm pursuit if you discount the speed factor headlights are on everything seemingly normal uh, just that really intense high speed and we've been following this now for more than an hour really it's been going on the uh, freeways McCullough that this drive has been on include the 10, the 5, the 60, 57, and now, as you said, the 605. Right. Remarkable that there hasn't been any erratic driving here other than the high speeds. Uh, the, this car has been driving very uh, fast, but uh, not uh, causing any other crashes along the highways he's been on all night long. Uh, in fact, uh, we, there was only one time where he made uh, one uh, sort of maneuver that was a little questionable uh, as police were continuing to chase him here. You can see that CHP has a chopper on him with the light there. Uh, it does appear like he's slowing down a little bit now in the 90 mile per hour zone, but speeding back up there, you can see here as he moves his way down the 605 southbound. Yeah, and hitting those bumps, you can really see the car kind of fly there. Oh, yeah, there uh, one you of go. the yeah, one of the things you noticed uh, is that the uh, the traffic is relatively light on this holiday weekend, uh, so he's able to just go straight ahead. There you see the CHP cruiser edging up right behind him, so he definitely knows he or she that they are being followed right now and that authorities definitely want them to pull over. As far as what they could do, they don't seem to be pulling off of this one as we have seen many times. Um, we see them pull off because they consider this a dangerous pursuit. Yeah, New Shopper 4 above the air as well as Ileana uh, with more details on what we're seeing here. What do you got, Ileana? Hey guys, so this pursuit is southbound on the 605 here, approaching the 91 freeway, and I'm sure you gave uh, the viewers most of the uh, critical details here. Uh, the biggest one of which is that uh, officers think that this person is possibly under the influence of drugs or alcohol, and it's a pursuit that's been going on now for quite some time. I'd put it at over an hour. It was initially officers from the Bell Police Department that tried to pull this driver over, uh, but clearly he failed to yield and the pursuit was on. He made his way over to the highway though, which is how the California Highway Patrol got involved, since they are the police of our freeways. And since then, this guy has been on multiple freeways. He's been on the 105, the 110, the 405, the 57, the 60, the 605. Uh, just, I probably left a few out. I mean, this pursuit has been going on for quite some time and at very high speeds. Ileana, CHP is really staying with this driver. Has this been the case all along? Have they been that close and that dedicated to this? Yeah, so pretty much the entire time that we've been overhead, they haven't given this guy too much in the way of room. Uh, what you're seeing now is pretty much what we've seen this entire time, and it's multiple units. I've counted as many as three, and I just need to widen out to show you some of those additional ones, but three units of the CHP have been on this uh, the entire time, as well as uh, multiple helicopters. Uh, initially, when it was Bell Police behind the vehicle, they had uh, the, or the uh, LA County Sheriff's helicopter overhead, since Bell does not have their own and then once CHP took over then uh, the CHP helicopter got over the pursuit so the night sun that you see uh, sh shining on the vehicle is being provided by the California Highway Patrol and uh, what we're hearing uh, over their scanner is that they believe that there are two adult males inside of this vehicle now because this is a DUI case the, dr the passenger in all of this 
may not want anything to do with any of it. But of course, uh, he's along for the ride in this case. And so when the pursuit does come to an end, everyone within the vehicle will be detained just the same. And then of course, officers will determine who is responsible for what. And if that person uh, is not responsible for anything, then of course that person will be free to go. That's new information. Two people confirmed that we believe at least inside of the car as this chase continues right now. Speeds reaching at times 111 miles an hour. And Ileana, you mentioned police uh, remain pretty pretty close to uh, this car as it continues along the highways. He hasn't ventured off into any uh, roads in different neighborhoods, right? He's, this has strictly been a highway chase. Oh, thankfully not, because at the speeds that this guy has been traveling at, this could be such a more dangerous situation. He's been on the freeway literally the entire time that we've been overhead, and it's been over an hour at this point. And so that does take a lot of the danger factor out of it, because you don't have pedestrians, you don't have cross traffic, no red lights, no stop signs. So it does take some of the the danger level uh, out of this pursuit. But of course, you see those speeds just as well as I'm seeing them. This guy has been triple digits pretty much most of the time. I believe the highest speed that I saw was 117 miles an hour. Uh, but again, unfortunately, uh, really not much in the way of close calls. No, we do see him changing lanes now. Is this the first time you've seen him kind of go back and forth? And that does get dangerous because at these speeds, he could clip a car. Yeah, that really is a concern when he does uh, cut it that close. Uh, but he has kind of been all over the freeway, uh, and he's been on multiple freeways. Uh, and that part actually makes it more difficult for the officers because normally we would be talking about things like spike strips. Can they deploy a spike strip in this situation? Well, they can, but at this point it's so difficult to figure out which lane is this guy even going to be in because he's really been all over the roadway. Yeah. And uh, right now we're actually coming up to the transition with the 405. Let's see what freeway he picks. I believe it's going to be 405 North, but we'll, uh, he actually yeah, looks like it's going to be 405 North, but I'll know as soon as he completes the transition. Yeah, so this is a 605 that feeds into the 405, also the 22 near the Long Beach area, 405 North. That's going to be heavy traffic as it goes through Long Beach, so he's going to encounter a lot more vehicles there. And potentially, maybe Ileana, this is a good position for uh, police to lay down some of those spike strips if they know that he's headed in that direction. Yeah, that's the key, is trying to figure out what way is this guy going and which lane is he going to be in to be able to get that spike strip in the right lane. Another thing we often talk about is a uh, pit maneuver. Can they do it? Well, the vehicle is the right size for it, but the speeds simply are not. Uh, he's just going way too fast. And normally for a successful pit, they'd want him to go about 35 miles an hour. Uh, but at this point, I can tell you, I've never seen him go that slow. Uh, so the slowest I've seen is, is probably about 60 miles an hour, maybe when he was in a little bit of traffic. So he just really hasn't given him, them the opportunity. No, and now that he has picked a freeway, he or she, and his, or you said two, two men, so uh, they picked a freeway now and it's a straightaway. They, they are also picking up those speeds. Uh, but... Sometimes we have seen the authorities, the CHP, back off because they don't want to egg them on. They don't want them to keep going faster, but they are really staying with this. Yeah, they're really staying with it, which is surprising because oftentimes in a situation like this, when a driver has been driving this quickly, they would often go into what's called surveillance mode when they back the units off and they have it be a helicopter-only pursuit in hopes that the driver will slow down because perhaps they'll think that hey, I dodged the police, they're not chasing me anymore, I can slow down. It often does work. Uh, but in this case, I have heard no talk of them going into surveillance mode, which makes me think that perhaps officers know a little bit more about this person than we do. Of course, uh, we know that they originally wanted to stop him for DUI. Uh, reckless driving, of course, is going to be part of it. Failure to yield, that's part of it too. But is there something else that they know about this person that is preventing them from backing off into that surveillance mode and staying on him uh, literally just feet away? Yeah, and did you see the CHP officer maneuver just to try to, you know, get around the cars and stay right behind him? So they are very dedicated to this. Absolutely, and, uh, and Macalo, I know you're very familiar with this area. We're passing by Long Beach Airport, so as you said, normally this is a very busy area, especially with, uh, with the holiday coming to an end. A lot of people just coming home using Long Beach Airport to, to come back to our area. So I can tell you that at least the area around here tends to be get pretty busy around this time. Fortunately, at, at the freeway itself doesn't look that busy, but I just hope that he does stay on the freeway because for the most part, he's been able to avoid, of course, uh, hitting anything. 
uh, during this pursuit because he's been on freeways this entire time. Yeah, and that's been remarkable considering the speeds. You mentioned 117 at one of the highest rates you saw. I saw 111 a short time ago. 105 right now northbound, or 405 right now northbound. He's getting close to the 710 interchange. It's going to be curious to see if he goes northbound on the 710. That'll take him back to kind of the Bell area where this all started more than an hour ago. Absolutely, and from what we know just from covering pursuits, I've been covering pursuits for the last 13 years, I know that uh, that, police, that people in pursuits tend to return to an area that is familiar to them, and it makes a lot of sense. If you return to an area that you know, then you're not going to drive into a dead end, you're not going to make a mistake like that, you'll know where the parking structures are, you could maybe try to ditch the car and run into your house or run into a friend's house, so it does give you a few more options than if you're simply lost. In this case, as you said, uh, if he wants to head back to Bell, he's going to have to pick up that 710 North. He's had plenty of opportunities to do it along the way, uh, but really hasn't veered back in that direction. So let's see if as he approaches the 710, if he finally decides to uh, go that route. But uh, the way he's set up right now, it does put him uh, on the uh, 405 North. All right, and we've covered many pursuits, Mikalo. I know you have, too. We sit here, we watch these, and we often, I mean, it, I don't even know a percentage, but it is the majority of the time that we see them continue to go back to where it started, a place they are familiar with. I, you just missed it there, but he went up to 123 miles wow. an hour. So he's speeding very quickly northbound on the 405 right now as he approaches the 710 interchange. It'll be interesting to see if he does make that turn northbound on the 710 or if he continues on with the 405. He's in the Signal Hill area right about now. Uh, and moving very, very quickly. Yeah, you talked about how uh, traffic might pick up in the area. We have seen a few more cars here, uh, but we're also seeing there's another um, CHP officer. They are really sticking with him here, and it seems like an open freeway right now. There's got to be something there because of CHP's continuing to chase him at these speeds. There's got to be more there than just a DUI, or he, they think he's a, a larger danger to drivers, and that's why they're continuing to chase him uh, with not only the, the chopper in the air, but the but the cruisers behind him as well. Yeah, and Ileana pointed it out too. Uh, sometimes they can back off and they can use their helicopter to just go into a tracking mode. But look, another uh, officer right there, they are staying lined up right behind him and staying on him. And that just ups the energy right there. I mean, it's just pushing him forward and he is going at a high rate of speed. Look at that, yeah. 115. 116, I mean, some of these um, uh, speeds are not exactly accurate as it tries to find the exact one, but you get the idea. And this has been going on for almost an hour and a half now. So that is some intense driving. And Ileana pointed out that he has kept these speeds. Right, and if, uh, if our map is correct here, it looks like we have passed the 710 uh, interchange. So we stayed on the 405 northbound headed toward uh, what looks like the LAX area, now in the Carson area at these high rate of speeds. I count one, two, uh, Ileana said there was three uh, cruisers right behind him, and they are keeping up with him at these high rate of speeds as he heads northbound on the 405. Yeah, and he's been on every freeway almost tonight. She uh, mentioned quite a few, the 405. It all started in Bell, the 5, uh, 60 freeway at one point, just changing freeways. Uh, not on surface street so far, and she pointed out that is a good thing because at these speeds, you know, we expect that erratic driving to continue. Really hasn't faced much traffic, so it's just a straightaway now as the CHP stays right behind him. I don't know how many uh, patrol cars you have seen, but it's it's quite a few, at least three or four that are sticking with him. And look how close they are now at this point. Are they trying to intimidate him? Are they trying uh, to get him somehow to slow down? Yeah, and he's hovering back and forth from the HOV lane to uh, the left lane of uh, traffic, uh, really trying to maneuver his way through all the traffic that he sees as he approaches uh, the LAX area now in the 405 in the Alona uh, Londra Park area. Now, if he is going to approach that area, uh, I do know there is construction there. You, I drove by it this morning or today when mm -hmm. I was driving into work, so there could be a potential bottleneck there that could slow him down. It'll be interesting to see how CHP and, and officers there approach that as he approaches that area. All right, that'll be something for us to look at as we continue to follow this. It's difficult to see inside the vehicle. It's very dark inside, but we do have information uh, from the scanner that it's two people and it's two men mm -hmm. inside this vehicle. Again, the, the want is possible DUI and of course, failure to yield at this point. Yeah, so once again, we're looking at a white Camry, two men inside, uh, started more than an hour ago using the 10, the 5, the 60, the 57, uh, 605, now back on the 405, headed toward the LAX area. 
uh, the high rates of speed sometimes reaching upwards of 120 miles an hour, 115, 111 miles an hour now uh, at a steady rate in the 90s for the better part of the last couple okay. of months. Long Beach area, let's check in with Eliana Moreno. She's a news chopper for, she's been following this for the entire pursuit, Eliana. Kathy and I last spoke to you just a few minutes ago. We were in Long Beach. We're all the way in Carson now. So this pursuit is a really fast mover, 100 miles an hour plus. I think I just saw about 120 miles an hour uh, just a few seconds ago. So he just crossed over the uh, 110 freeway. He's continuing on the northbound 405. So he's going to be coming up to the South Bay curve here in just a moment. And uh, I can tell you that earlier in this pursuit, this guy was in this area before, but going the opposite way. He had been on the southbound 405. He's made his way over to LAX already twice. Uh, so if he continues in this general direction, that's going to make it a third time around back towards the LAX area. And I can tell you that when he does get close to LAX, LAX police does get notified by the California Highway Patrol because their concern is that this guy's going to try to hide at the airport. Of course, there's lots of places for people to hide there. We've covered a number of pursuits where that's where vehicles end up because because there's so many parking structures, so people figure they can ditch the car and take off running. In this case, though, we don't believe the car is stolen. We believe that this is a DUI case. So if the car is not stolen, officers are able to run the plates on the vehicle, and likely they know who this person is. Uh, so ditching the car isn't necessarily going to work in his favor. But again, uh, at this point, continuing in that general direction, northbound uh, 405, making our way through the South Bay curve. And you talked about some of the things they could do. Uh, pit maneuver doesn't seem possible. It's too high rate of speed and we're on the freeway. So that's not a possibility. Spike strip, uh, again, a high rate of speed. It would just be so difficult to try to do that. So their options are really just to, to stay behind and keep this, this car in sight. Yeah, at this point, all they can really do is just wait him out. Uh, that could mean a, a number of things. He could crash, hope that doesn't happen, of course. He could simply run out of gas. I mean, this pursuit has been going on for at least 75 minutes. At least that's how long we've been overhead. It's, it's been going on since before that. So it's unclear how much gas this guy started out with to begin with. And, uh, of course, the car could become disabled in some other way, or they could try to deploy some spike strips, possibly. So that's still... A possibility. It's a difficult one, though, just because uh, he's not really uh, sticking to just one lane or one freeway to make it difficult for uh, those uh, officers uh, to guess uh, exactly where he's going to be uh, to be able to deploy it effectively. But I will add, uh, since uh, our last report, there's a, now an additional unit of the California Highway Patrol that is behind this guy. So now we have four units of the CHP behind the vehicle, as well as the CHP helicopter overhead. And Ileana, as we approach LAX right now, we've already seen from our own LAX camera the, the congestion at the airport at the Horseshoe. Uh, could traffic maybe stop him or slow him down a little bit so police could actually get a handle of him? Yeah, as we approach LAX, as you said, I'm not seeing too much in the way of traffic on the freeways themselves, but it's those surface streets around the LAX area that could really uh, wear him down. Now, he's actually hitting the brakes right now, so I'm going to try to yeah, scoot up ahead and see why there actually is a little bit of traffic. Okay, so let's see what happens here. I'm going to push in on him. I don't want to lose him. He's in the carpool lane there. So let's see if he tries to ride the shoulder or weave in and out of traffic. At this point, it looks like he's pretty much stuck, but let's see what he does. I want to see These what the CHP are getting does. Right on his tail. Yeah, I want to see what they do at this point. Like you said, they're staying right on him, and he is in a bad position right now. He's got to try to squeeze through somehow, and they're on both sides. Yeah, it looks like one cruiser is going to try to go around there. It looks like they're coming out of the cars now. They're trying to order him to come out with his hands up. You can see officers there. Have they drawn their weapons? Yeah, they've drawn their Can weapons. Can you imagine you're a dry, you're someone on the freeway right now seeing all of this? Uh, that, does it look like someone is out the window on the driver's side? Can you see that, Ileana? Yeah, I do uh, see someone. I can't really tell if he's uh, hanging out the window at all. But this is a really bad situation just for officer safety uh, because you have officers with their guns drawn in the general direction of other vehicles that have nothing to do with this. So that's the problem in this situation. And fortunately, though, it does look like both doors are opening, which is not what they're asking them to do. Usually it's driver first, passenger next. Uh, but at this point, it looks like both occupants are complying. Hands are up, so I feel a little bit more comfortable about pushing in. It does look like a male driver and a woman mm -hmm. passenger. Yeah. Uh, the male driver does appear to be complying. He's down on his knees. The female passenger also complying. 
flying, walking back towards the direction of the officers. So it looks like this little traffic break that was up ahead, uh, unclear exactly why, uh, but that little traffic break may actually be what brings things to an end. Uh, but uh, two people about to be in custody here on the uh, northbound side of the 405 freeway near El Segundo Boulevard. And a traffic break could have been something that the CHP did. You know, that could have been what, you know, one idea. of their other tools that they used to try to bring this to an end. Absolutely. Okay, so they're in custody now. So I'm going to actually go ahead and skip ahead. I want to see what's going on. Uh, was this a uh, traffic break that they did intentionally or is there an accident? But it looks like it's an accident. Oh. Uh, so we do have a, a couple cars uh, off to the side there. You have uh, the CHP blocking because of that collision. And it actually worked out in their favor because they got this guy to completely stop and surrender. Uh, but you will notice that officers aren't letting their guard down. They're, they still have their guns drawn. They have to approach the car, make sure that nobody else is inside. And uh, once we see them gesture with their hand, they'll usually do a number four. That means that it's a code four. That means that the car is clear and uh, everyone is in custody. They still have to pop the trunk. That's usually the very last element. And it often takes officers uh, some time to figure out where the release button is. Uh, but when they do, uh, they will be able to uh, put a nice little bow on the end of this pursuit. Yeah, and hopefully they can see inside and make sure that there's nothing else inside. And they have two people in custody now, the possible DUI driver and failure to yield. It looks like he may have given the all clear. I can't tell, Liliana. Yeah, he just did. I was looking for that magical number four, and I just saw it. So uh, code four, all clear. Uh, so what officers are going to do, do now is uh, try to just move the car out of the way uh, because uh, obviously these... Uh, the other